Father, we worship you. Thank you for the joy of one solid month, oh God. In 2023, you kept us, you sustained us, you upheld us, you delivered us, you provided for us, oh God. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No one could have done this but you. No one but you, Lord. No one but you, God. Are you getting a bubble? Can you get him a son to eat? Our hearts can thank you. God, we are grateful. Grateful, Lord. Grateful, Lord. Father, we say to you be the glory, God. To you be the honor. Oh, yes, Lord. Ah, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are worshipped. Father, we have returned to say thank you. Like that one leper for the journey of January. Today is the last Sunday. Daddy, you have kept us. You have sustained us. You delivered us. You helped us. You provided for us. You kept us, Lord. Father, you did all of this and many more for us, oh God. And that is why we are here. Many this same January have passed on. Many did not live to see today. Some even saw yesterday, but they are not here anymore. But we are here. Father, we come in bowing up to bow down and to say thank you. We want to thank you for our loved ones, our children, our spouses, our jobs. We are even able to keep a job. We thank you. It may not be the perfect one, but at least we have something that is bringing in food on the table. We say thank you. Daddy, we are grateful for all you are doing, oh God. We say, blessed be your holy name. Father, we commit the service this morning to your hands. We have come to meet with you. Father, we pray you attend our service in the name of Jesus. Father, you have said where there are two or more in their midst, you will be. Father, come and be in our midst, oh God. Come and touch lives. Come and lift burdens. Come and heal the sick, Lord. Father, come and refresh our soul, oh God. For as many who are here who are weeping inside, Father, give them laughter for their trouble today, oh God. Give beauty for ashes this morning, oh God. Let us know that indeed we met with you, the King of Glory, in the name of Jesus. We commit the service in your hands. We say, have your way, Holy Spirit. Speak your mind unto us this morning and let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Then we are going to be going into the book of Judges chapter 11, 1 to 10. That is where we are taking our scriptural reading this morning. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. I read. KJV version. I'm reading. Now Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor. But he was the son of a harlot. And Gilead begot Jephthah. Two, Gilead's wife bore sons, and when his wife's son grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall have no inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land of Tob. And worthless men banded together with Jephthah and went out raiding with him. It came to pass. After a time, that the people of Ammon made war against Israel. 5. And so it was, when the people of Ammon made war against Israel, that the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. 6. Then they said to Jephthah, Come be our commander, that we may fight against the people of Ammon. 7. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Did you not hate me? And expel me from my father's house. Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? 
and the elders of Gilead said to Je Jephthah, that is why we have turned again to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the people of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Nine. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, if you take me back home to fight against the people of Ammon, and the Lord delivers them to me, shall I be your head? 10, which is the last verse. And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, The Lord will be a witness between us if we do not do according to your words. May the Lord bless the reading and the listening of this word in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> May we please be standing for the hymn. The hymn of today is, There shall be showers of blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Glory be to Jehovah in the highest. Thank you, Father. Showers of blessings. That's what we need, Lord. And that's what we are pleading for. Let there be showers upon our lives. Let there be showers upon our homes. Let there be showers upon your church. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we let our holy hand in one Worship him this morning. Come and appreciate the King of Kings. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Give him praise for he deserves it. He deserves to be worshipped. He deserves to be lifted higher. He deserves to be honored. He deserves to be magnified. Oh, think of all his goodness. The Lord that has kept us. Today is the very last Sunday in the month of January, the new year. Oh, you are still alive all by his grace. All by his grace. Oh, my it's great. The abundant grace of our life that have not been. Come on, appreciate him. Appreciate him. You know, many people started this month without their noble. But we are standing up by his grace. We turn his shoulder and tell him, Lord, I appreciate you. Oh, Jehovah, I appreciate you for your loving kindness, for your goodness, for your faithfulness. Oh, you are too good, oh Lord. You are too good. You are too good. Oh, yes, we declare you are grown. Thank you, Jehovah. Blessed be your name, oh Lord. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Thank you, Father. We worship you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshiped. Give us Psalm 125. Psalm 125, verses 1 and 2. 
Psalm 25, verses 1 and 2. What did they say? The Bible said, They that trust in the Lord shall be as what? As Mount Zion. They which cannot be removed or abided forever. Verse 2. He said, As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth. The Lord who has supported you, the Lord who has kept you, the Lord who has not failed concerning you, come and talk to him this morning and say, Lord, your promise is over my life, over my family. It shall not fail in the name of Jesus. That promise will not fail. It shall not fail in the name of Jesus. As mountains surround Jerusalem, Daddy, you have surrounded me. Even as I go into the new moon, surround your Lord with your mercy, with your love, with your compassion. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you go to verse 3 of me, he said, For the rod of the wicked <laughs> shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Father, in this coming month, O Lord, as this month is going to an end, the lot of the wicked will not rest upon me. It shall not rest upon my household. In the name of Jesus. It shall not rest upon the church of God. In the name of Jesus. Daddy, you will remember us for good. You will do us good, O Lord, according to your promises in our life. Thank you, my Father. Daddy will return the glory unto you. Be thou exalted, Lord. As we continue today, Father, continue with us. We look up unto you. Lord, strengthen us. Do that which the work can do, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. We worship you. To you be the glory, honor, power, and majesty. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we have worshipped. Amen. God bless you all. Welcome your neighbor to the right or the left and say you are welcome to church. The Lord bless you. May I pray this prayer for somebody this morning? That because you have left all to come into his presence, today, the Lord will remember you for good. In the name of Jesus. We welcome to church again. For those of us who are here on Friday night during the night vigil, we were considering this chapter of the Bible that we read today in the book of Judges. Amen. And we're going to hammer a lot on that this morning. Can you put it on the screen, but let's have the amplified version of it. We're considering a topic that says the manifestation of his grace. What did I call it? The manifestation of the grace of God. Hallelujah. When the grace of God is upon a man, <laughs> hey, it's a different person. Nothing can hold him back. Nothing can suppress him. Hallelujah. And my prayer for you this morning, may that grace rest upon you. I say, may that grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. As we want to thank God for that grace that has kept us from January to this time. First Sunday, first, second Sunday, this is the last Sunday in the month. And by this weekend, we'll go into the new month. That grace will continue upon your life in the name of Jesus. I say that grace will continue your life in the name of Jesus. God has created you for a purpose. And one of the purposes that God created you is to have dominion. Is to have what? Dominion. And for you to be able to dominate, you need that grace. You need that grace. You need that grace. My prayer for you, in these days remaining for this month to end and the new month, make the Lord grant you that grace for dominion. I say the dominion to be victorious, the Lord will grant unto you in the name of Jesus. The dominion to the, the grace to be fruitful. The grace to multiply, the Lord will release upon you in the name of Jesus. And by that grace, every mountain of opposition against you, you will subdue them in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. In every situation and circumstance, we should always thank God for his blessings upon our lives. Because when we look at it, indeed, the Lord has been so good to us. Or is there anyone here that wants to say the Lord has not been good to you? Anybody? 
so that we can all gather together and pray a prayer of deliverance for you. <laughs> Abe? Praise God. The Lord has been good to us. We cannot thank him enough. It is so good and that's why we are still alive today. On Friday night, our brother that led us in one of the prayers, we fired to in the January alone, so many different attacks. Not in Canada per se, but our neighbor here in the US. That somebody will just suddenly wake up and begin to shoot people and kill people for no reason. But even in Canada here, at the subway now, it's become a challenge at the subway to, 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 to go through the subway. You just suddenly saw somebody being stabbing and being pushed onto the rail, rail line. For what? But you know what? It has not been you. It has not been any of your family. Do we need to thank God? Has God been good indeed? He's indeed been good. He's been good to us. So if not for his grace, it could have been me. But that grace is what has sustained us. That grace is what has kept us. That grace is what has made a difference in our life. And that's why when a man carries the grace of God, he's made. He's made. And I told us on Friday that one of the things we should always ask for, anytime you pray, ask for that grace. Ask for what? That grace. Because without grace, we just begin to race around. With no focus, no hope, no, no, no attention, I mean, no direction. Hallelujah. It is the grace of God upon our lives that has caused judgment to be replaced with mercy. Resentment and hatred in our lives. Grace has caused it to become favor for us. Rejection has become re being accepted. By the grace of God upon our lives, we have testimonies upon testimonies. Do many of us know that things that happen to you happen to others? They never live to tell the story. It is the grace that makes the difference. Why don't you just ask the Lord? I said, Lord, in every situation, in every circumstances, let your grace not cease from my life. Are you praying that prayer? Grace is what we are talking about. And I pray that grace will not depart from our lives in the name of Jesus. So when we now come to the story of Jephthah, can we have a place? The Jephthah we talked about right now is a typical example of what grace can do in a man's life. Jephthah was born just like any one of us was born. Jephthah had a father just like every one of us. Jephthah had a mother just like every one of us, right? He did not just drop from the sky. If he had dropped from the sky, that would have been a supernatural one. But can you imagine that he was born in a home and in a family? And right from the time he was born, hatred began. Resentment began. Jealousy began concerning that, that man. To the point that he was not recognized. To the point that they said it to his face. They did not say behind him that you have no inheritance in this family. Some of us, they have spoken to us before like that in our family. What you will become, we'll wait and see. They have said it to your face. Amen. And some people have probably said to you that Except I'm not alive, that's when you become what you become. What a threat. What a threat. Going by his background, he had nothing. He had nothing. Whatever it takes to succeed, he didn't have it. For the success of a man, he needs a parent's guidance. Right from when he was a, a child. They direct him, they lead him, and they told him the way to go. But this man was denied. Just simply because he was not from a legitimate mother. Excuse me, let's define that. That's where we're going. 
Who is a legitimate mother? Who is a legitimate child? And who is a legitimate mother, uh, father? The father, there's a the father, there's a father and a mother. That makes them legitimate. But some people now came and were saying to him, Your mother was a prostitute. A prostitute is not a human being. A prostitute forbidden from, from having children. Please help me. Are they forbidden? Come on. Huh? They are not forbidden. Praise God. There's a place in the story that a man was advised. If you want to marry, go and marry a prostitute. Eh? Go and look for a prostitute and marry. That's restoration. But to Jephthah, they told him, you have no inheritance. And the Bible said they trusted him out. Look at this. Verse 2. Go to verse 2. They trusted him out of his father's house. In other words, they frustrated him. Gilles, um, okay. Go to verse 3. You see that? Because he could not bear it, the reproach was too much. And the Bible says he fled from his brother and lived in the land of, of Toby. Of Tob. And worthless and unprincipled men gathered around Jephthah. Can you imagine? Worthless men, unprincipled people that just do, that does what they, what seems right to them. In other words, a place you can call a slum, right? That was the kind of life was not beginning to live. Somebody they let, that that was living in, in, in with his family. We can also relate it to the story of uh, Mephibosheth. But that's another story for another day. Praise God. Unprincipled men gathered around him. And they were surrounding him. Because they saw grace upon his life. They might not know what it was, but they saw that there is something about this man. And wherever he go, he went to, that grace was following him. Because if not for that, those men would not have surrounded him and begin to respect him for that. He fled and went to another land. He fled. But wherever he was, grace located him. I pray for somebody this morning. As this month is ending and you are going to a new month, grace will locate you. Grace for accomplishment will locate you. Grace to be lifted will locate you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said grace will locate you. At that point of your life where you don't know what to do, grace will speak for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Why do we need grace? Why do we need grace? Go to verse 4. Let's see something there. Now it happened. Why the Ammonites fought against Israel? Go ahead quickly. The Ammonites fought against Israel and the elders of Gilead went to who? The one that was rejected. The one that said he had no inheritance among us. The one they told that we don't know you here. The one they said to your mother was a prostitute. Prostitute that are not recognized in family. Eh? Don't be the same, Papa. Now they had problem. Now they could not face the battle. Now they could not, even the elders, not even the children, not even the young ones among them, were now seeking for him. And they went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. Do you know one thing? It does not matter where the enemy may have pushed you to. When the time for your rising comes, grace will locate you. Hallelujah. There may be a time that it may be have been hidden. Your glory, your star, your destiny may have been kept somewhere and locked up. I say again, when the time for the manifestation of God's grace upon your life comes, no one can stop it. 
You may be going through some challenges now that are not palatable. Brethren, hold on to Christ. There is grace upon your life. It is that grace that is still keeping you alive. And that's why the enemy have not been able to get at you. Oh, come on. They will do everything possible. But when grace surrounds you, <laughs> hey, <laughs> is something else on the other side. Praise God. Go to verse 6. They came and sought for him. And what happened when they sought for him? Look at what happened. And they said to him, Can you imagine? With the same mouth that they told him, You are not recognized yet. With that same mouth, they told him, You are the son of a harlot. With the same man, they told him, you have no inheritance. What did they say to him? Come and do what? Oh, come and talk to me, somebody. Come and do what? Be our leader. So that we may fight against who? There is something in you that the enemy cannot understand. They may be seeing it in the, phys- in the, in the physical, but in the spiritual, they do understand it. I say to somebody, you carry power. Oh, okay. I said to myself, I carry power. Because when there is power in you, and fire complements it. <laughs> hey, tell me who will stand before you. You. The one that was rejected suddenly has not become the one they are looking for. and fight for us. Come and be our leader. They were the one now seeking for him. They rejected him. There are places you may have been rejected. I don't know who you are. I don't know who is listening to me. Maybe reje- uh, uh, immigration have rejected your application. They have said it. Se- you have tried several they have rejected you. But I stand to declare concerning somebody. The next application you put in shall be accepted in the name of Jesus. So Jephthah said to them, Did you not hate me? Of course. They hated him. Did you not drive me from the house of my father? Jephthah realized he has a father. Just like everybody. But those people did not accept that their father was his father. But he made them to remember, did you not send me from my father's house? Why then have you come to me now when you are in trouble? Everyone that have denied you of your trouble, God will say, of your destiny, of your glory, of the mercy and favor of God, God will put trouble in their lives. Because not until they see you will they be able to fail. (laughs) Praise God. And then the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah. So they have a reason. They have a purpose. They have a goal. Jeremiah 29, 11 says so. He said, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you. That means God has a goal for our lives. He has a purpose for our lives. Of which no one is permitted to stop. And no one can stop it. So also the elders came. They said, this is why we have come to you now. Uh Uh-uh. If now you wait, you go do. I can't hear you. (laughs) This woman. (laughs) Praise God. This is why we have come to you now, that you may go with us and find the Ammonites and become the head of all the inhabitants. They did not say even their own family alone. All the inhabitants of Gilead, come and be our leader. They were seeking for him. The one that was rejected. People will seek for you. Listen, there is something God has deposited in you. The Bible said the gift of a man, what will he do? Come on, somebody talk to him. The gift of a man, what will he do? That gift that the Lord has deposited in you, he shall make way for you in the name of Jesus. Praise God. This is where we have come. Can I have a snap, please? 
Can I have verse 9, please? So Jephthah said to the elder, if you take me back, that's so that we can thrive, have an agreement. So not after everything is said to now, you will not turn your back again. Amen. He said, if you take me back to fight against the Ammonites, and the Lord give them over, he reiterated that question again. Will I really become your head? What did they say? You see, when the spirit of confusion is upon a man, he, doesn't, he loses his senses. I am sure later on, the Bible did not tell us that, they will regret it. They probably would have regretted making that statement. That was it not the same person we, we sent away. And then I said to Jephthah, they, in fact, they won't call the Lord to be our witness. Between us, be assured that we'll do as you have said. From now on, the enemy will hear your voice and they will tremble. It's all about grace. You ask me again, why do we need grace? So that the glory of God can shine in our lives. So that our purpose and our destinies can be fulfilled. So that we can reach our goal without any hindrance. Listen, it might not be, it might not be easy, it may be challenging, but once the grace is there, uh-uh, on your way to, to, to the top, there may be ups and downs. But one God is with you. <laughs> it does not matter how long it takes, you will get there. Like they say, it can only be delayed. It can never be denied. Why do we need the grace? You and I very well realize that the times we are in are evil. The times we are in right now, they are what? They are evil. Hallelujah. And when you look at Ephesians chapter 5, 15, uh, 5, 15 to 17. Excuse me. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. The Bible says, See then that ye were circumspectly, not as fool, but as wise. In anything you do, be wise. Don't be like a fool. Walk carefully with honor, with purpose and courage. Have a goal. Know what you want. Amen. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. We are for being not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is for your life. Know the purpose of God. What is God saying concerning you? That's one thing you always say to me, God. God, what is your purpose in this matter? When any issue arises, tell you, discuss it with God. He's your father. What the house I will call Fusca to Fusca. Face to face. Discuss it with your father. He hears. He listens. And he answers. Praise God. We are in a period of danger all around us. Every kind of imaginations. And when we look out there, we all know there is economic crisis all over the nation. All over the world, so to say. It's affecting a lot of people. People are losing their jobs. Inflation rate is going higher and higher every now and then. But people are still surviving. People are still surviving. And you may be wondering, people, you may be asking some people, how are they making it? It's not there. It is because of that grace. And I said to somebody today, it does not matter how high the inflation rate may be. God is able to bless. And God will bless you. You will not lack. You will not bear. Let people say there is a casting down. Our testimony will always be there is a lifting up. God will lift you up. In the mighty name of Jesus. Why do we need that grace? Very quickly. To perfect our imperfection. We are not perfect. We need that grace to be perfect. We need that grace. Isaiah 64 and verse 6. Isaiah 54 and verse 6. The Bible says, but we are all as unclean things and all our righteousness as what? As filthy rats. As we do fade as leaves and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Brother, sister, what we need is that grace for our imperfection to be perfect. Hallelujah. Righteousness cannot be attained by our flesh alone. We need that grace. We are encouraged to live a holy life. We are encouraged to live righteously. But you know very well, it's not something you can just do of your own. We need the grace. We need to keep asking for grace. Because every day, every day of our life, we are filled, we are filled with temptations. Or is there anyone that wants to say he doesn't face temptation? 
Anyone? Come on. If you say so, you are deceiving yourself. Eh? If you say you are not facing temptations, you are deceiving yourself. yourself. The only thing you can say is that God has given me the grace to overcome it whenever it comes. God has given me the grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That righteousness cannot be attained by our flesh alone. It takes the grace of God for us to live that holy life. Amen. Amen. It is that grace that justifies us in all our endeavors so that we can live a life that is pleasing unto God. Titus 3 7. Why do we need grace? We need grace to avert the plans of the enemies of our lives. We need that grace. When you look at the book of Genesis 37, Genesis 37 about the story of Joseph, it was the grace of God upon Joseph that, 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 that secured him. Do you know how many times he dreamt? Do you know how many times he told his brothers? Now, let me ask a question. Why do you think he was telling his brothers? Anybody? Why do you think he was telling his brothers about his dream? One. Eh? Who said? He trusted them too. Yes. More. More. Why did he tell his brothers? Why did he tell his friends as well? Hoping for clarity from them, yes. But much more. He loved them. He was open-minded with them. And that's the situation that many of us face. We are open-minded with others, but they, don't, they are not open-minded with us. You trust them, but they are not trusting you. That's exactly the situation. So when we find ourselves in this kind of thing, we need the grace of God to you know, go through this kind of situation. Because if it was not for the grace upon Joseph, what do you think will have become of him? How many times did they plan? Let's kill him. Let's throw him to the animals. At the end of the day, they agree. Let's put him in the pit. He will dry up and when we thirst, he will die there and that will be the end of it. No, no, let's do that. Let's sell him into slavery. And that was, that was that grace. That was the grace. Because if they are thrown into the pit, that will have been the end. They probably will have put sand on, on him and nobody will know his location. But grace, where he cannot speak, grace, where he was weak, grace, where somebody will speak for him, grace. That said, no, don't let's do that. Let's bring him out and sell him into slavery. He will go and go forever and that will be the end of it. They never realized what? That they were selling him into his destiny. I pray for you. May your enemy sell you to your destiny. That was an error. They made. They never knew. If they had known, they would not have sold him. Praise God. So we need that grace. We need that grace. Praise God. We need that grace to avoid the plans of the enemies of our lives. We need that grace. And that's why I'm praying for my son. I'm praying for you. That whatever the enemy is planning against you and your family, grace will avert it for you in the name of Jesus. I say grace will avert it for you in the name of Jesus. When you walk in grace, God will always ensure that the evil that is planned for you is turned around for good for you. And that none of the devices or the plans will work against you in the name of Jesus. Why do we need the grace? Two more and we'll round up. To activate help and attract favor. We need grace. Isaiah 45, 1 to 3. Isaiah 45, 1 to 3. We need grace to activate help and favor. Brethren, whether we like it or not, we all need, we all need help. We need help. The Bible says, For thus said the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand have gone, holding to subdue nation before him, and I will lose the minds of kings. To open what? Before him the two leaf gates. Gates to be opened for you, and the gates shall not be closed in the name of Jesus. He said, I will go before thee and make the crooked places what straight. I will break in pieces the gate of her brass and cut in asunder the bars of eye of her straight very quickly. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which is called you by thy name, am the God of Israel. Praise God. We need that grace. We need that grace. 
and grace also come. I mean, promotion comes by grace. Psalm 75 verse 6. Psalm 75 verse 6. Promotion does not come ordinarily. Brethren, promotion can come through a man. And promotion can come through God. And promotion can also come through the, through the devil. But there is a difference between the three of them. When a man promotes you, he can bring you down. When a man promotes you, he wants to glory in it. Amen? He wants to glory in it. He will tell you, if not for me, can you imagine? If not for me, ah. Even when you tell him, God only use you, even though you are the one, God only use you, no, I am the one. Eh? Okay. May you not meet such people. Ah, you may not like that prayer, but it's the reality. People that will help you and they will now sit on you. I say God will separate them from you. That's the reality. Why should you help somebody and you are not sitting on the front for you? You not become a demigod to that person. But the one that will help you and give glory to God, may you connect with them in the name of Jesus. Man can promote and they will demote you. Especially if you do anything that is contrary to them. <laughs> you are finished. And that's it. That's man. How about Satan? That one is worse. Satan gives you with the right hand. And what does he do? He takes it back with the left hand. And by the time he's taken back, you are worse off than you were. You are worse off. So think about that. Think about that. Is that the kind of promotion you want? No, 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 no. That will not locate you in Jesus' name. But when God promotes, <laughs> he that is Lord promotes, no one can bring down. No one. 75 verse 6 says, says, for promotion coming not from where? From the east or west or south or north. But God is the judge. What does he do? He put it down one and set it up another. God will promote you. In this season, it's your season. I say God will promote you in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak it to somebody's life today. God will promote you. Esther was a nobody. Esther was a nobody. Can you imagine? From an ordinary person to becoming the queen of, this, of, the, of the city, of the kingdom. And man that promoted the queen before was the same man that brought down the queen. In verse, remember the story. Remember the story. Esther chapter 1, maybe verse 19 there about. Let's look at it. Esther chapter 1 verse 19. Let's see what it says quickly. Esther verse, chapter 1 verse 19. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. If it pleases the king, look at that. You see what we're saying? Just because the queen refuses to come and do what? To come and dance before the guests. Or come and appreciate or welcome them. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> and now, the community decided, the elders of the city, the lawmakers, the decision makers. <laughs> I don't know. If he please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him. Can you see that? And let it be written among the laws of the Persians and Medes. It becomes a law that day. The one that was not there before. Just some purpose to bring you down. They will make that law. Every law that will be negative to your destiny. We break it in the name of Jesus. There will be not altar. The Vashi come no more before King Ahasuerus. And let the king give a royal estate unto another. Listen. If there is no bringing down, there cannot be a lifting up. Come on, somebody. Did you hear what I said? If there is no bringing down, there cannot be what? A lifting up. But for you, I stand on this altar. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God, live it. You shall be lifted in Jesus' name. 
I say we shall be lifted in the name of Jesus. Even if it's only one position that is remaining, you will be located in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Why do we need the grace? We need that grace to attract the favor of God. The grace was upon Esther and she received favor. And that favor caused her to become what? The queen in place of Vashti. Hallelujah. Brethren, grace for genuine and everlasting God comes from the Lord himself. We need that grace for everlasting love and genuine one. Go to God in prayer. Psalm 121. He said, I will lift all my heads unto where? Unto the heat. From where cometh my help? My help comes from who? From God. Who makes the heavens and the earth. You need help? Cry to God. Don't cry to man. Don't cry to man. Man will let you down. They will let you down. Yes, they may do it, but they will let you down. Yet they may do it. The whole world will know about it that they are the one. They will tell your story to the boss of the air. They will tell your story to the animals in the kingdom. They will tell your story even to the dead in the grace. That's the truth. But when God does it, it is permanent and it is settled. How do you attract great? Number one, through our relationship with God. That's very key. For as many that don't have a relationship with God, you are not going to enjoy that grace. Your relationship with God is mandatory for you to enjoy His grace. Your relationship with Him. Your relationship with Him. Your relationship with Him. Let's see what the Bible says in Mark 7, 27. Mark 7, 27. So that you will know that except you belong in, you may not be qualified. There was a story of a woman In the Bible, who needs healing for her household? And when she came, it was told that she does not belong to that group. She does not belong to that community. And so there is no way she can be a partaker of that grace, of that blessings that is available. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children fall the world field. For it is not meek to take the children's bread and cast it onto dogs. Do you know what that is? Go to verse 28 and see how that woman responded. Verse 28 very quickly. And the woman answered, Yes, Lord, the dogs under the table even eat of the children's crumbs. Those who have understanding will know what that is. When you know the God you are serving, when you have a relationship with God, oh, come on, somebody, you will tell the Lord, God will understand your language. You understand this language, you understand your language. Go to the next verse. What happens there? What happened? What did Jesus now say? And he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. Because the woman knows her rights. Because the woman has a relationship, he knows. He knows the ability of God. Ask yourself and ask your neighbor, Do you know God? Does God know you? Until you belong to the household of faith, you cannot be a partaker of his grace. Bow down your heads. I want you to check yourself this morning. Bow down your heads. Do you belong to the household of faith? Brethren, we are not talking about you coming to church. You may come to church. It does not show anything in your life. It is not about how long you stay in the church. It is not about how long you are faithful in the church. It is not about, about, about how much of service you are putting in, in, in the church. But do you have a relationship with God? Check yourself. This is the time. This is not the time to be checking your phone. Keep your phone aside. And check yourself. If anything happens today, is your relationship with God established? So that you can cry to God, Abba Father, and He will answer you. If you have not done that, you have the opportunity to ask of the Lord right now. 
and say, Lord, I come to thee and I surrender all. I surrender all to you, Lord. I surrender all to you, Lord. That woman says something. Give us verse 28 in the Amplified Version. Quickly, please. She says something, something that is touching. She had the understanding. She replied, yes, Lord. Even the pet dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. That means there's still a little blessing remaining for me. And if this is what it takes for me to receive it, I'm ready to do it now. So that I will not miss it. That's what they're saying. If that is what it takes for you to enjoy that grace, come on, surrender it to him right now. Surrender it to him. Ask the Lord and say, Lord, I surrender all to, all to you. Take control of every situation, O Lord. Take control. I surrender all. I surrender and I confess, O Lord. And I declare that you are my Lord and my Savior from now on. Take hold of my heart. I believe you, Lord. You died for me on the cross. You took away my infirmities. Forgive me for my shortcomings, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me. In the name of Jesus. Brethren, if you are here, you are sitting one leg in, one leg out. That's not what we are talking about. Total obedience is what the Lord is talking about this morning. And he's speaking to somebody. If only you will hear, you will profit from it. The Lord bless you. Go ahead and give thanks to God this morning. Go ahead and bless his holy name. Just say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you for the privilege even to be alive to see another day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for another glorious month that is coming to an end. Thank you for the grace to see the new month coming. Lord, may that grace not cease in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your manifold blessings of divine provision and protection over us and all that are ours, O oh Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You have been so good to us that we will pray, Lord, that this grace we are talking about will not cease in our lives. In the name of Jesus, let there be the manifestation of your grace. Showing forth in our lives, O oh Lord. And wherever we go, Lord, let grace speak for us. Wherever our children go, let the grace speak for them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. From now on and the rest of our life, continually we shall be covered with the garment of grace. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed and honor be unto you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all. Let us all stretch forth our hands towards the pastor. Let us prophesy into his life. He has given unto us. Let's pray that the Lord should bless him in return. A heavy virtue that I've left him, that the Lord should replace unto him. Even above that, that he has given out, that the Lord should give unto him. That the Lord should bless the work of his hands. That even that position that the Lord has put him, that the Lord will continue to strengthen him. He will not be weary, neither will he be tired. Strength from above, the Lord will give unto him. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you very much, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, it's time for us to give our tithes and our offering. If you have given your tithes, please be outstanding. Whether you've given it online or you have it with you here, please be outstanding. I want you to prophesy into your if you have given, raise up your hand to pray. And um, if you are just about to give, raise your envelope up. And let's pray. I want you to prophesy into your finances as you hold your envelope, as you raise up your hands. Thank God for the grace that they have given you to see the job that you are, to, to, to see the source of that income. Now ask God that devourer that God should send away from you. That upliftment that you want God to do unto you, that the Lord should do, do it unto you. The new level you want God to put you, ask for it. 
If it's at your workplace, if it's on your business,